Happy New Year. Happy New Year and welcome to The Pursuit. It is so good to see you guys. My name is Josh, I'm the Bears Paw Campus Youth Pastor, and I'm so excited to introduce you to Devin. Devin helps us at Bears Paw Campus and it is a pleasure to have him. Thank you for that awesome intro, Josh. I am so happy to be here. As someone who's watched a lot of Pursuit videos, it's awesome to finally be part of one. Yeah, it is kind of fun. And what better way to start your first Pursuit than with a challenge? Oh man, I'm kind of nervous to know what's gonna happen here. You should be. I mean, don't worry about it. Uh, we're gonna start off with a really easy one. We are going to have a bottle flip challenge. See who can land the most bottles in 30 seconds. Oh man, uh, I guess that's not too bad, but I'm pretty bad at bottle flipping. Okay, give me a moment, so I'll get those. I have hand selected this one for you. All right, all right. Hope, uh, hope, hope it's a bad one. Okay, you ready, Dev? I think so, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, sorry, I meant to say go. Oh yeah, one. Two. Oh. Ah. Two. Three. Oh boy. Oh. Two. Three. Oh no. Four. Oh. Five. Four. Oh no. Dev, you can't beat Six. me. Six. No, Devin, you can't. Seven. Five. Ah! Devin. Eight. This is like basketball. Seven. Nine. Six. Ten. Okay, fine. You're a champion. I get it. Right? You were practicing ahead of time, weren't you? It's true, I was. This is what you do for fun. Yeah, no, this is every waking hour devoted to bottle flipping. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're an ace bottle flipper. It's a secret, secret hidden talent. Well, thank you. What can I say? It's just, yeah, it's just my secret. I guess it's not secret anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there now. <laughs> well, alrighty, seeing as you won, why don't you lead us in our first discussion question? Sure. Today, we are going to be looking at how Jesus changes the way we treat people and how we flip people's perspectives. So, has new information ever flipped your perspective upside down? Have you ever been really confident about something you thought was true, but then had your whole world flipped upside down when you found out you were wrong? Maybe you discovered a rumor you had been spreading was completely made up. Maybe you learned something that disproved what you used to think was true. Maybe you realized someone you thought you couldn't stand was actually really great. Has new information ever flipped your perspectives upside down? I've had my perspective flipped by new information quite a few times. Like this one time, my mind got blown by how much something cost. Growing up, I was a huge Lego fan, and as often as I could, I would buy myself a new Lego set. But now, years later, when I walk by the toy aisle and see the new sets that have come out, I am shocked at the prices. The sets that would have cost 20 bucks when I was growing up are now at least double that. And in my mind, the set should still be worth what it was when I was a kid. And I can't believe how expensive Lego has become. But I kept all my Lego, and now I have it hidden away like buried treasure. I'm sure it is worth a fortune now. So what is your most valued possession? Is it actually worth a lot of money? Or do you just love it a lot?
grade nine, I played for my school soccer team. I played out alongside some pretty incredible guys, and one of them was my friend Ion. He was so incredible, he would actually give it his all every practice and every game, and that's what really made him stand out. I truly believed he was our most valuable player, or MVP, on our team. But when it came time for awards that year, he didn't get the MVP award. I believed that they made a huge mistake. I believed they missed seeing Ion's value on the team. Ion did not let it bother him though. He was so good about it and he understood the value of being a team player and that a trophy wouldn't change whether he gave it his all at every practice and every game. See, in the moment, I was so focused on my limited definition of value that I missed the whole point. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you've been the person that other people have overlooked, judged, or pushed to the side because they didn't see the value in you. Maybe you've been the person who wrongly decided someone wasn't worth your time, energy, respect, or care. Or maybe you've been both. No matter which person you've been or still are today, Jesus has something to say with the power to flip your perspective upside down. So, let's go back a few years to something that is pretty cool, vinyl records. They were part of an era none of us live in anymore, but a whole bunch of people still really appreciate. People collect records, play records, decorate with records, and love that scratchy, earthy sound you can only get from a record player's needle hitting the vinyl. But maybe the biggest difference between this vinyl record and your favorite Spotify playlist is when you're halfway through it, you don't have to flip it. Sure, you could decide to only play one side of the album and it would work just fine, but you'd be missing out on half of the music. If you wanna hear the whole thing, you've gotta flip it. Meeting and learning from Jesus is a little bit like this vinyl record. There will be times when you, we think our understanding, beliefs, and perspectives are the whole picture. We'll believe we've got things figured out. We'll, we'll be pretty confident in our judgments about God, ourselves, and others. But when Jesus shows up, he tends to flip everything upside down and show us there's a whole new perspective we've never considered before. With Jesus, we finally get the whole picture. Through him, our, our wrong assumptions get flipped upside down and finally made right. Can you think about a time when you had an aha moment or learned something that completely changed your perspective? already talked about some of the things we get wrong about who is and isn't valuable. So what do you think some of those wrong ideas are? What are some not so great reasons to decide? Whether it's money, popularity, looks, ability, knowledge, or skill, there are a lot of shallow or unimportant reasons we might wrongly decide someone does or doesn't have value. Let's take a look at what scripture has to say on the matter. 
In Matthew 5, 1 to 12, we read, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. When Jesus was here on earth, he spent a lot of time correcting people's incorrect beliefs about God, themselves, and each other. And at that time, a lot of people were under the assumption that God favored people who followed every religious rule, seemed really holy, and had it all together. But in Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, he flipped all of that upside down. Jesus wasn't exactly known for telling people what they wanted to hear. He flipped people's ideas about God, the world, and themselves completely upside down and usually in uncomfortable ways. This time, Jesus flipped people's assumptions about who mattered most to God. Some of the people Jesus was speaking to believed God valued people who were the most religious. But Jesus said having things like power, status, and fame don't get you any bonus points or special treatment with God. According to Jesus, the people who are the most blessed in God's kingdom are people who have known poverty, who are grieving, who are gentle and kind, or who are suffering. Because God values the people, the world often doesn't. I wonder how this news from Jesus would have been received differently by the different kinds of people who were within earshot. For the people listening who had often been overlooked and undervalued, this was probably really good news. They likely have been told and believed that they were less deserving of love, care, and attention than others were. But now Jesus was flipping their view of themselves upside down. According to Jesus, they were loved, cared for, seen, and deeply valued by God. But for the people listening, who were religious leaders, powerful, or wealthy, Jesus' words may have seemed like bad news. After all, if you've always seen yourself as better and more valuable than others, you don't want to be told that you've had it all wrong. Jesus' message was for everyone who showed up in the crowd that day and for everyone who would hear this story later, like us. To all of us, Jesus makes this clear. God sees and values people who are often overlooked. It really is a crazy thought. So what do you think? What was so different about the way Jesus chose to see and value people?
passage in the book of Micah about another time God's people got this wrong. Many years before Jesus was born, people tried to make themselves seem more valuable to God by doing a lot of the religious things. At the same time, they began treating others as not so valuable. These people followed God's laws, sang worship songs, and made offerings to God, but they sort of lost track of the point. They cared so much about earning God's love, they forgot to love the people God values. In response, God sent the prophet Micah to deliver a message. Let's read Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah's message was a strong criticism of anyone who neglected, mistreated, or took advantage of others in God's name. When people weren't valuing others as well, God used Micah to show them a new way. God invited them to pursue justice for those who have been mistreated. Be merciful to others rather than judgmental and humbly follow God's lead. Some of this sounds a bit like Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, doesn't it? Maybe that's because God has been trying to tell us the same thing for a long, long time. See, God values people the world often overlooks or mistreats. When you think you don't matter or deserve to be overlooked or mistreated, Jesus flips that idea upside down. And when you think you're better or more worthy of God's love than someone else, Jesus flips that idea upside down too. Right when we think we have figured it all out, Jesus flips our assumptions about who God values. Most valuable player trophies are usually awarded to people who do something exceptionally well. You have to earn them. But Jesus showed us a new way of viewing value. Jesus shows us you don't have to do a thing to earn your value. You've al you are already valued simply because you are deeply loved by the God who made you. Nothing you do can earn you extra value in God's eyes. And here's what's, what's really amazing. Nothing you do can take away any of your value either. Because we are all deeply loved by God, we can stop competing to see who's the most valuable. Instead, we can choose to value each other like God values us. In the Sermon on the Mount, it's kind of like Jesus was giving away most valuable people awards, but to the most unlikely people. If Jesus was preaching that same sermon today, I wonder who he'd give a trophy to. Maybe he'd mention the person who avoids the lunchroom because they aren't sure who they'd sit with. Someone who's endured years of bullying, trauma, or abuse. Doesn't look, sound, dress, or seem to fit in with the people around them. Is quietly dealing with physical or mental health concerns. Has lo recently lost someone they love. Isn't sure where their next meal or safe place is going to be. Maybe it's someone who's anxious about what their family is going through. Once you figure out who Jesus might give an MVP award to, I wonder how you could value that person too. Could you reach out and start a new friendship with them? Help them or defend them? Ask how they're doing? Ask how you can support them? And if you are the person who has often felt like you aren't valued, I wonder how you could begin to find more value in Jesus. We all struggle to believe we're loved and valued sometimes. If that's you, you need to get to know Jesus for the first time. Spend time reading what God has said about how he loves you and how loved you are. Spend time talking to God about how you're feeling and let God's spirit talk to you too. Tell a trusted adult how you're feeling or doing. In Jesus' upside down kingdom, it's not the most perfect, popular, richest, or most frequent church attenders who are the most valued by God. Jesus shows us we are all valued. And to make that point, he puts special attention on the people who are usually the most undervalued. If you are feeling less than valuable today, I hope you remember Jesus loves you deeply. 
If you've been trying to prove your value to God or others, I hope you'll trust you have nothing to prove. And if you've been overlooking or even hurting someone Jesus values, I hope you'll make it right this week by choosing justice, mercy, and humility instead. Jesus flipped our assumptions about who God values. So what will you do this week to value the people God values? Join me in prayer. God, we thank you that you have set a beautiful example for us that you have asked us to love others as you love them. We thank you that you have given us an opportunity to make things right if we have hurt other people, and God, if we have been hurt by others as well. We pray that there will be healing and restoration to friendships. We pray that there will be uh, family strife that dies down. We pray, God, that your, your light and life will shine in and through each of us. That, God, we will honor you and glorify you, and we will live in the way that you call us to, showing love to others, being merciful and just and kind and gentle and loving. Help us this week as we do that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here. We'll see you guys again next week.